how's everybody out there doing tonight? Uh, it is nighttime in Atlanta. Uh, once again, Corporate Fiction City Boy live from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. You can always check out the website, cityboysrrust.com. Uh, this is the second fiscal quarter of the year 2018. Uh, today is April 15th, 2018. And the purpose of this video is going to be key performance indicators slash you are a salesman. Uh, before I get into that, I want to share the very first, not the first book, but the second book that I was given by a mentor. It's called the E-Myth Revisited. And it talks about the three different spirits that make up the entrepreneur, the technician, the manager, and the owner. Okay. And that's a great book. You never, you never complete it. You always have to go back to it and realize where you are in the evolution of whatever it is you're doing. But that's a great book for someone who is uh, looking to become self-employed that has a skill set. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to get straight into a couple of definitions. Uh, in the world of skills, the first definition I want to uh, give my definition on is apprentice. Uh, the apprentice, they get introduced to the language of their craft and wiring diagrams. They can't repair anything yet. So typically an apprentice will uh, get introduced to the language wiring diagrams at the trade or the technical skill level or they may you know get slid through the crack and get on the job training but nevertheless you're just learning the language of whatever industry you're in you're getting familiar with schematics or wiring diagrams but you can't repair anything yet anybody that has a skill set knows that the person coming fresh out of school or the person that's attempting to get on the job training they don't know anything and uh, if you can't perform the task at the skill level then ultimately you can't sell you can't fix anything you can't sell so that's my definition of apprentice nothing wrong with being an apprentice we all have been there we all have to start and we're green some people call you grasshoppers but yeah that's basically uh, you don't know anything yet you got a piece of paper saying that you've gotten basic training or basic fundamentals taught to you but actually going live with it and actually applying what you've learned in a real world environment, you have no clue at this point. Uh, the next level is going to be the craftsman. They are good at a particular craft. They have good skills in wiring diagrams and can perform major or minor repairs. They join technical associations and fall in love with their craft's language. Self-esteem and confidence are above average. They can sell repairs below average. So at the craftsman level, you're typically between three to five years of doing a particular thing, uh, whether it's repairing cars, baking cakes, doing accounting, any kind of skill set, doctor, a technician, three to five years, you're competent, you've had wins, you've had losses, uh, you've joined some type of association that talks the language of your skill set, and you start to get confidence uh, among your peers. Uh, at this level, you can sell certain jobs. Uh, you have the confidence to do certain repairs, and you may start to tinker around on the side, uh, outside of whatever you're doing during the daytime to get your paycheck. You know, the confidence is there. You'll start working on the side, possibly. Uh, one of the things about a craftsman is you can get stuck here, and there's nothing wrong with that. You can retire from a company. You can put in 25, 30 years once you get to the craftsman level. You're competent at what you're doing. You know that when you go in, you know, you've seen a lot of different things. And there's nothing wrong with staying right there at the craftsman level. A lot of people are going to stay right there at the craftsman level. Masters. They can fly above the craft and figure out a way to capitalize on their skills. They are students of their craft. They measure themselves. They don't get caught up in debates with apprentice or craftsmen about repair talk. So at the master level, your competence and your confidence as a craftsman goes to a point where you can go to a third dimension with your skill, 
meaning you have so much confidence in yourself and your ability that you start to figure out ways how you can make money off of your own God-given talent. That's mastery. And in order to go into the realm of mastery, you have to develop certain habits. And one of the habits is measuring yourself. And measuring yourself is, uh, I like to use the example that Robert Kiyosaki always talks about, how in school you get report cards. In the real world, you get a financial statement. And so in school, I hated to get report cards because school didn't bring the student in me out. It took, it took life in a particular trade to bring the student in me out. And money is what I became a student of. So that made me want to do the work. And then I look forward to the grade because I'm doing the work. So at the mastery level, here's where the key performance indicators come in because in order to be good or great at what you do, you have to weigh yourself. I say put yourself on the scale. You got to weigh yourself. Another way of saying it is you got to inventory yourself or you got to do key performance indicators. You got to look at what you're doing. So let's get into some of those key performance indicators directly related to the appliance repair industry. All right, so the first one we're going to get into with the key performance indicator is uh, we're going to look at the cost of doing business. And the cost of doing business, well, let me take a step back. We're going to actually go through six on this video. We're going to do the cost of doing business. We're going to do average tech labor revenue per day. We're going to do average tech total service ticket per day. We're going to do callback percentage, first time complete ratio, call completion slash day ratio. All right, so let's go back to number one, which is cost of doing business. Cost of doing business, and I'm just going to use an example month uh, from a particular fiscal year. And cost of doing business, some of the expenses that will be under cost of doing business would be your vehicle insurance. Uh, I, I use advertising in my equation for cost of doing business. I do it with and without advertising, but I'm going to do vehicle insurance. I'm going to do advertising, gas, receptionist. How much does it cost for someone to answer the phone for you? Your business phones, your office. How much is it costing for your office? So once you add up those expenses, okay, you're going to divide that by the amount of working days in that month that you plan on working all right so just in this example just to give you real live numbers the cost of doing business with advertising is going to be two thousand eight hundred eighty three dollars and ninety three cent so we take that two thousand eight hundred eighty three dollars and ninety three cent and we're going to divide that by 23 working days, right? So that gives you $125.30. I'm sorry, $125.38 a day. That's the cost of doing business. That's your overhead, right? That's what you got to hit, you know, just to get back to zero and start to get in the black for that given day. Now, if you take out the advertising, your total cost of doing bit my total cost of doing business for that particular month would be $1,433.20. Now I divide that by 23 days, and then that gives me $62.31 a day would be my overhead. Okay? So it takes $62.31 a day without the cost of advertising to make sure vehicle insurance is paid, gas is paid, receptionist, business phones, office space. If I add advertising to that same 23 days that I'm going to work that month, that's going to boost me up to $125.38 a day. Okay? The next number is going to be average tech labor revenue per day. Okay? And 400 is low, 700 is high. So I'm going to say it again. It's the average tech labor revenue per day. What's the average money 
revenue you bring in per day. 400 is low, 700 is high. All right. Number three, what's the average tech total service ticket? Each work order you have, what's the average that you're making off each work order? All right. 150 is low. 200 is high. Okay. Number four, your callback percentage. 7% is bad. 3% is good. All right. First time complete ratio. 60% is low. 80% is high. And number six, and the last one will be call completion slash day ratio. How many calls are you completing in a day? Four is low, seven is high. So now we got a metrics, right? Now I got a metrics that I can grade myself against. Now, this is at the master level, so I'm not concerned. I'm flying above what I'm actually doing. So this is a different realm, and this takes certain habits to even do this kind of inventory on yourself on a weekly or monthly basis. All right, so let's get into how we get total tech revenue per day. All right, so you're going to add the service call and labor amounts to find out your revenue in a day, right? You're adding your service call and your labor amount. You're not counting the cost of parts because that's an expense, right? You're looking at what comes in when you complete a job, your service call amount and your labor amount. That's your revenue. So you're going to add the service call and labor amounts to find out your revenue in a day. All right. You're going to add up each day to get your gross total overall. Right. So let's just say for this month that we're using an example, the gross total overall revenue was nine thousand six hundred eighty seven dollars and thirty five cents. All right. So when you add it up each day out of them 23 days that you work. Your service call and your labor amount for those 23 days, it totaled $9,687.35. All right. Now, how do you get your average total tech revenue? In other words, what's the average that I'm making per service ticket? I got the gross. The gross is $9,687.35. What's my average work order? How much am I bringing off each work order? So you're going to divide your gross total by the number of working days. So we're going to take that $9,687.35 and we're going to divide it by 23. That means that $421.18 is what you're making per day. Okay, now let's go back to number two under our key performance indicators. Average tech labor revenue per day. Low is 400, high is 700. So this particular month, I'm on the low end because I'm at 421.18 on average labor revenue per day. Okay. I'm in the matrix, but I'm on the low end of the matrix, right? This is inventorying yourself. Look at yourself, right? Now what we're going to do is we're going to get our average per work order. So we're going to take that gross total again. We're going to take that $9,687.35. We're going to divide that by the number of work orders. So it took 69 work orders to have gross revenue of $9,687.35. So we're going to take that $9,687.35. $87.35 and divided by 69 actual work orders that you did. That gives you $140.39. Come back over here and weigh yourself. Put yourself on the scale. Average tech total service ticket. Low is $150. High is $200. Again, you're on the low end, right? I'm only doing 100 So each work order, I'm making $140.39. That's what the math is telling me. Remember, the language of business is accounting. The language of business is math, holding yourself accountable. So we're looking at this. All right, now we're going to go to, we have our callback percentage. 
to get your callback percentage, you're going to divide recalls by total work orders. All right. So for this month, I had two recalls out of 69 work orders. That's a 2.8% recall callback percentage. So when I come back over here and I weigh myself, callback percentage, 7% is bad, 3% is good. All right, I'm at 2.8, so that's good. That means out of 69 calls, I only went back on two. Okay, and I would ask the question, why I had to go back? I'm going to look at that, and I want to know why. What happened, right? What was the reason for me having to go back on those two? That's me. All right, your first-time complete ratios, right? There's a lot of talk in the industry about first-time completes, you know, Big emphasis put on that, but it's a little deeper than that. But let's just do first call completes. First call completes. Take the number of service tickets completed the same day and divide by the total number of work orders. Okay? So when I go back through those 69 work orders, how many of them did I complete the first day? It was 64. Okay? So 64 divided by the 69 total work orders that's a first time complete of 92.7 percent okay so then you come back over here and you weigh yourself first time complete ratio 60 percent is low high would be 80 percent I'm at 92.7 percent all right so let's go back over here and let's go to call completion slash day ratio how many calls did I complete per day this previous month, this month that, that, that I'm using an example on? All right. To find that out, you're going to divide total work orders by working days. All right. So we had 69 work orders. We're going to divide that by 23 working days. So I was doing three calls a day. Right. So you come back and you weigh yourself. Call completion slash day ratio. Four is low. If you're running four calls a day, that's low. Seven is high. OK, I ran three calls a day. OK, so I'm on the low end on that. Right. Based on the metrics. Now, the reason why I'm sharing that with you is. Number one, analyze your work because the numbers tell a story. See, there's a story behind these numbers. OK, I'm running ninety two point seven percent first call complete for that month. Right. My average labor revenue per day is at 400 a month. I'm sorry, 400 a day. Right. And my average service ticket is about 140. OK. So the reason why you want to look at yourself is a master is going to ask certain questions to become more efficient and more profitable. OK. That's how I look at it. That's 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 part of the inventory process. Number two, think about ways to improve your score slash numbers. Remember, business is an intellectual sport. So at the end of the day, it's about accounting. The language of business is accounting. So if you're running calls every month and you're good at what you're doing, you're at the craftsman level, you're good at repairing, but you're never stopping and inventorying yourself. You're never looking at you know, where are you weak at? You know, how, you know, how can you get better? You know, how did you get, you know, to that gross amount in revenue? And, and how much did you keep? And why didn't you keep more? Right. These are certain questions that you ask when you start to weigh yourself or do an inventory on yourself. Concentrate on how much you keep and how can you keep more? OK, that's 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 mastery. Right. We're looking at ourselves. We're grading ourselves. Number four, analyze how many service calls were ran with no upsell. OK, so out of that 69 calls, 36 of them was strictly service calls. So now some of the questions that I might ask myself as a master is, you know, how did I go? How did I run 36 calls and I only walked away with a service call? You know, what what appliance did I look at? You know, how did I not sell a box of refresh? How did I not replace the water hoses on a washer? You know, how did I how did I walk out that house 
with five opportunities to provide service or share information which allows me to provide service? These are questions that you got to ask yourself if you're trying to maximize and become the best that you can be, right? Because I'm looking at this and now I got to take that 36 and I got to break that out and I got to look at, okay, how many of those 36 calls that I actually just go on and it was the temperature control setting wasn't set properly in the refrigerator, okay? So did I adjust it to the normal recommended setting and then I just tell that customer, let's give it 24 hours to see if it'll cool properly and walk out the house? If so, then I sucked as a salesman, okay? Because I left five other machines in that house and I never asked the question. Or did I ask the question? You know, are you having issues with anything else? You know, where was my salesmanship when I went on that service call? So there's always there's always going to be ways to look back at what you did in order to capitalize more for the following month. And it always comes back to why was there no upsells? Again, going back to just the strictly the service calls. You know, why didn't I pick up? A PM on the dryer, or why didn't I do, you know, uh, a, a diagnostic on the dishwasher or the washer? You know, how did I walk out as a master? I'm not concerned with running eight to ten calls a day, right? I play the game for keeps. So what a lot of guys do is they want to get busy, right? They want to run the workload that they're used to running with the big major company, right? So they want to. They got that habit. They're, they're used to running seven, eight calls. The master sits back and says, you know what? If I charge accordingly, I can run half the calls. And if I show up emotionally and the salesmanship is there, I can get more and keep more and do half the ripping and running around the city that the craftsman and the apprentice does. And so a lot of times what happens is we get in business and we have this concept that I got to get more, I got to get more, I got to get more, I got to keep a guy busy, I got to I gotta stay busy, I need to keep my workers busy. And in reality, that's not the case. In reality, if you slow it down and if you focus on the indicators, I can cruise around, go to three different houses, and if I work it right, I can go to three different houses, stay in each one of those houses two to three hours, working on multiple appliances, and still finish that day with great numbers so I wanted to share this information uh, I feel that there's a lot of things that correlate with key performance indicators number one is charging accordingly uh, when you weigh yourself and you look at what I shared in the beginning with these key performance indicators and when you do the math on any given month for your own service that was provided be honest with yourself that's one of the things that I've realized in life not only in business but in life a lot of people don't like to look at themselves so we won't do financial statements if we won't do a financial statement four times a month right then how are we gonna do key performance indicators we don't have the habit of looking at ourselves what we'll do is we'll blame the customer you know oh I hate when customers do this or do that that's the wrong way to look at it. If you're really looking at yourself, you'll start asking yourself, how, how can I get over that objection when a customer asks this or a customer asks that? How can I get over that objection to get them on the side of trusting that what I'm sharing with them is information that A, they didn't know, and B, they may need to go ahead and get the service that I'm that I'm informing them about. So this is just some information that I want to share with y'all. Uh, again, I look forward to any kind of uh, input or feedback that anybody may have based on the information that I've shared. But this is part of my ritual. These are things that I do on a weekly and a monthly basis. I'm always weighing myself. I'm all, and, and we didn't even really get into the financial statement side. Okay, all of this correlates to the financial statement, but we didn't get into the financial statement side. That's a whole, but it's, it's the same thing. You got to get in the habit of looking at yourself. You got to get in the habit of being accountable. You got to get in the habit of looking at yourself. And what I found out, this is one of the biggest secrets that I just shared in this video 
is you look at all the masters, the Michael Jordans of the world, the Tiger Woods of the world, the Kobe Bryants of the world, any profession, they're doing these key performance indicators. They're weighing themselves. I like to look at it like this. If we're all on a professional sports team, right? I'll use football, for example. There's 53 players in the locker room. Five of them will be all pro and make it to the pro bowl. The rest of them are pros. They're all getting checked. They're craftsmen. The rest of them are pros, but five will make it to the pro bowl off that team. Are you going to be a pro bowler or are you just going to be on the team? Being on the team is the equivalent of being a craftsman. If you're going to be a pro bowler, that means you're going to be a master, which means you got to hold yourself accountable. You got to weigh yourself. And you have to set goals so that your ship, you know where you're headed. A captain always knows where he's going. You ask a captain of any ship, what's the destination? He's going to tell you. Haiti, Cuba, Jamaica, South America, Africa. He knows where he's going. If you don't know where you're going, then what happens is you drift. You start off at the harbor straight and then you start drifting. And before you know it, you never make it to Jamaica. You never make it to Haiti. You never make it to Puerto Rico. And you look up and you ask yourself why. Because you never was weighing, you never were inventorying yourself on a regular basis to make sure I'm on track. There's a whole lot of stuff that happens within a week on a tactical basis. You're in people's houses. Some things, you know, parts discontinued. There's all kind of things that happen, but you got to stop at the end of the week. You got to weigh yourself. You got to inventory yourself, right? Get yourself back on track. Keep the goal in mind. And if you, if you keep that mindset in life and in whatever profession that you're in, you'll just keep going. You'll just keep hitting destination after destination after destination. And people keep asking you, how is he doing it? Or how, how is she doing it? And it's because you got goals. So I hope this information helps. Once again, I'm out. I appreciate for all the subscriptions again. They are trying to have me monetize this channel. But as I said in the very beginning, this is just my way of giving back. And I'm going to keep it real. My word is all I got. No sellout. I'm not monetizing the channel. Just going to keep dropping information. Y'all have a good one.